Today is obviously a very special day, being Martin Luther King Day, and a day set aside to honor the life and works of Dr. Martin Luther King. And we've asked Dr. Larry Macon, Sr., Senior Pastor of Mount Zion Church in Oakwood Village, to join us today to talk about Dr. King, his works, and of course, his legacy. And Dr. Macon is the author of a book called, Will the Real King Stand Up? So first of all, thanks so much for joining us today on the show. We really appreciate you yes. being here. And we, you. we love your son who we see all yes. the time on our show. He does a great job with Everyday Champions. He's That's so motivating. Larry Macon Jr. Thank you very much. And we're so grateful to be on your show and also to have Larry Macon Jr. here on your show <laughs> as well. He's a great guy. Like father, he like is. son, Absolutely. right? He's a very great guy. Yes, yes. he's him. wonderful. So, you know, this is a very special day. Yes. Did you ever have the opportunity to meet Dr. King? No, I did not have an opportunity to meet uh, Dr. King. However, I could have met him uh, on, uh, on uh, June 28th, uh, uh, 1967. He had come to Cleveland uh, to push the uh, voting, uh, uh, voting participation by way of the election of our first African-American mayor, uh, Carl Stokes. Uh, he happened to have come to my little elementary school that I had uh, attended. Uh, however, I was working around the corner at a grocery store. A lady came in the store and said, hey, Dr. King has decided mm -hmm. to come by. And uh, at that time, I chose to work versus uh, go over there and see Dr. King. And I was less than one block away. And uh, even till today, uh, I am very regretful that I did not meet Dr. King personally. However, I had been chasing him down from that point on, uh, especially after his death uh, in 1968. Um, I had taught the uh, course of religious ethics of uh, Martin King at Cleveland State University for 15 years. Oh, wow. And uh, out of that experience and also pastoring the church for nearly 50 years and being in the community as the president of United Pastors and Mission, I have been chasing him down and I'm trying to help everyone else to discover who the real King really was and is. Well, you have a great work, work ethic to not leave the store, so. Yes. <laughs> that, yeah, that's yeah. Pretty awesome. it, it paid off, but it really did not yeah, pay yeah, off yeah. because uh, this man was one of the greatest voices of Absolutely. the 21st, uh, 20th and 21st centuries. And even today, we're trying to figure out all that he had to say beyond uh, the dream speech, uh, August 28, uh, 1963 yeah. in Washington. Well, and what do you think about it? that he resonated with so many people. Obviously, he was a pastor. What do you think was so important and different about him? Well, first of all, I think I'm going to be a little biased as a Christian pastor uh, in the Christian church. I'm going to say that he had Christianity uh, behind him mm -hmm. and on the side of him. But the real truth of the matter is he was relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, he was dealing with issues that were really impacting uh, not just uh, the uh, black community, but the entire nation and the world. He talked about the triple threats of America, which had to do with uh, racism, poverty, and war. I say it's uh, actually discrimination, uh, uh, economic injustices, uh, and also the war uh, in Vietnam. And that is what really um, attracted Americans. You know, we had nearly 100 years of violation of civil rights in America. We had the absence of voting right in America, and there really was not economic justice for all people. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really, those three ideas backed yeah. up by his Christian faith mm -hmm. was probably uh, at that time very prominent uh, in his own experience and America's experience. Mm -hmm. Sure. Tell us about the book that you wrote, Will the Real King Stand Up? And it is available on Amazon mm -hmm. for those of you that may be interested. Well, most people see King as the uh, I Have a Dream uh, King, the speech of 63. And that's almost the only thing that they know about King is that he had a dream. Uh, the second uh, piece that most people uh, only understand about King is that he went to the mountaintop, uh, you know, April 4th, 1968. Uh, truth of the matter is, King was a real person. Uh, he came out of a uh, 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 place of Atlanta, Georgia, uh, graduated at a young age of uh, 15, goes to college at Morehouse, graduates from Crozier with his master's, and at 26, he has a uh, earned PhD. And uh, what we do not uh, understand is some of the real life experiences that King had. He struggled personally with racism and discrimination during his time. Uh, he understood people who lived right in his neighborhood, who was from the poor section of the community. 
Uh, and so the real king and what the real king said was far beyond those two major speeches in America. He wrote a book, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos mm -hmm. or Community. And people, don't not, people still today are struggling with, uh, with what's going on in America today. Are we going to stay with community, which is unity, plus the community, or are we going to struggle with chaos as we are experiencing uh, today? Uh, people don't really understand what it means to have what King called the love ethics of Christ and the love et ethics of the community and brotherhood. And so there's many things and many other speeches, sermons. I mean, he was preaching almost every Sunday, mm -hmm. which means that he had a sermon almost every Sunday that probably we need to begin looking at. And so I decided to chase him down as best I could after researching him, teaching classes at Cleveland State for 15 years. Uh, pastor in a church that, you know, deal with some of these issues and crises that he talked about. Uh, and so I wrote that book entitled, Will the Real King uh, Stand Up? Uh, I'm uh, working on another book on King that I'll at some time divulge to you. Well, and you talk a lot about the chaos that we're going through, for mm -hmm. lack of better words, right? It's kind of a crazy time. 50 years after his passing, what do you think that he would be feeling uh, to look at the world today and that we're still dealing with a lot of equality issues? Well, I think the King's issue uh, in the 1960s are really the same kind of issues today, discrimination, racism, uh, incarceration, which is high, and we're talking mm -hmm. about that in Cleveland, and all of these wars that we are experiencing here in the entire world. And I think that he would go back to those issues. He would be very sad about the voting issue here in America because even in Cleveland, it's been very, very low uh, in, in, in the participation, mm -hmm. the education, uh, the registration uh, here in Cleveland, Ohio, and the nation. So his issues are really still the same to some degree. Well, it's an honor to have you join us today. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for taking the time. And for more information on Dr. Larry Megan Sr. or to contact him, you can visit mzov.org. Thanks again for being and here today. And thank you for thank having you so me. Much. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. I wish you well on this Martin Luther King Day. Yes, God bless. God bless you.